In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to recover from a hamstring strain the right way. It's not what you think. Hey guys, Doc Andrew here with the Charlotte Athlete, where we are committed to helping athletes quickly recover from injury so they can move better and continue to be active in their sport. Now, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button below so you're notified when more content is released. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about all things hamstring strains, how they're often mishandled, and exactly what to do to help you recover as fast as possible. All right, so first things first, we need to discuss the top reasons why athletes fail to recover from hamstring strains. The top two reasons specifically we're gonna go over today. All right, number one, and this is, it's kind of funny because this is actually the most common treatment often given for hamstring strains. And if you're dealing with a hamstring strain right now and you're failing to recover as quickly as you want, you're probably doing this number one most common thing that prevents it from recovering, and that is stretching. So let's talk about this for a moment. Think about what a hamstring strain actually is. So a hamstring strain is essentially micro tears or tearing of the hamstring muscle. Partial tear, strain, they're synonymous words, okay? So if you have muscle tissue that is partially torn or stretched out with micro tears within it, and then you try to stretch it out even further, you know, that tissue is just trying to heal and you're just aggravating it by trying to stretch it out further. You're preventing it from healing. Yes, you may have that tight tension type of a feeling, but that does not always indicate that stretching is the answer. In fact, most of the time, it, it is not an indication for stretching. Your body's just trying to heal and all you're doing is aggravating it further. All right, number two. Number two most common reason why these suckers fail to, fail to heal, heal. I can't pronounce my R's sometimes. Y'all just have to get used to it. But um, this number two uh, reason is athletes do nothing. They, you know, they get this hamstring strain, they rest, they ice, they blast it with a Theragun, they give it time. Oh, and then oh, now it's feeling better. So then they go back out there and usually the very first time they really exert themselves, whether it's a sprint, a run, a jog or some kind of uh, you know movement in CrossFit or you know any sporting event, it just gets re-injured. You can't do you can't just rest and hope that it gets better. The body doesn't work like that. In fact, the number one reason or number one uh, I should say risk factor of hamstring strains is a past hamstring strain. Why? Because these things are so commonly mishandled. All right, it is very very important that you recover and you treat yourself the right way. You can't just do nothing, you can't stretch it out. Two very important things to consider. All right, now let's jump into exactly what we should be doing and what we need to be doing. And there are three key components that every hamstring rehab protocol should include. All right, number one, and this is glute strengthening. So let's talk about this. Both the glutes and the hamstrings, the glutes are your butt muscles, right? The glutes and the hamstrings, they're in charge of hip extension. What is hip extension? That's basically sending the leg behind you. So if your glutes are not strong enough, if they're not coordinating well with the hamstrings, if their timing is off, if they're weak, then your hamstrings are going to have to work harder. This is a very common pattern we see with, with most hamstring strains. You know, the hamstrings and the glutes, they work together to send the leg behind you. If the glutes are too weak, then the hamstrings are gonna to have to work harder, all right, which will increase the chance of a hamstring strain to occur. So it's very important with every single program that you include glute strengthening. What are some good exercises? Well, we can include things like the squat. The kettlebell swing. the kettlebell deadlift or barbell deadlift. Things like lateral walking or sidestepping. stepping. 
And then you can start to progress to things like lunges, step ups, or even single leg deadlifts. The next key is ensuring that you have great hip mobility, especially if you're a student, you work behind a desk, or you just spend a lot of time sitting throughout the day. You need to make sure that you address hip flexor tightness in the front, and also hip posterior hip capsule tightness in the back. And since these, both of these movements are a little more involved, I've included links in the description below that have videos detailing exactly how to perform them. All right, and the third key is what is known as eccentric exercise. Now this one is especially key if the injury has exceeded about six weeks in terms of its total uh, recovery time frame. So at this point, the injured tissue has begun to, to scar down and degenerate. So it's less of an inflammatory process and more of just a scarring and degeneration. Eccentric exercise is a way to disrupt this trend and introduce a little bit of overload into the tissue, which will break it down a little bit so that your body can then repair itself in a much healthier and faster manner. All right, so what are some examples? Things like hamstring walkouts. or single leg ball rollouts. And once you start to get more advanced, you can go towards things like Nordic hamstring curls. All right, so these exercises are amazing. They're a little bit more complex, so I'm also gonna include some links in the description box below if you need to reference them for you know, further details, so make sure to check them out. Okay, so to recap, it is extremely important that you do not stretch your hamstring. In fact, you wanna do the exact opposite. You wanna get going with strengthening. All right, it's very important that you strengthen your glutes, number one. Number two, very important to ensure that you have really good hip mobility. And then number three, you gotta start adding in hamstring eccentrics to help rebuild that, that muscle tissue so that it become healthier and so you can recover faster. All right, now these are just the most common areas that most athletes need to work on. Uh, it's worth bringing up that there are several other contributing factors that are worth considering. So I just wanna to touch on a few of those real quick. All right, firstly, you know, very often when we have a hamstring strain, we can actually include or injure the nerve, more commonly the sciatic nerve that runs right by the hamstring when we have this type of an injury. So if you're including things like numbness and tingling or paresthesias or just that nerve type pain that's going down the leg, then that's something you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider when it comes to rehab. You know, other things are ankle joint restrictions, especially if you're a runner or a sprinter. If you have a stiff ankle, then you know, it's gonna cause your body to compensate up the chain to pick up the slack and it's gonna increase demand on that hamstring and that could be a pretty important player affecting how well that hamstring can fully recover. You know, and then lastly, you know, other things to consider would be your sacroiliac joint alignment, and that would be your pelvis. You know, if that is not in an ideal place, then it could disrupt your ability of your glute to fire. It will disrupt the ability of that hamstring to recover, and it can essentially create a leg length difference that can slow progress. So all things that we need to consider, way too in depth for this video. If you have questions about those, make sure, you know, leave us a, leave us a comment below and I'll do my best to try to answer it for you guys. But um, I just wanted to point those things out because they are important considerations and often uh, items that we do include in our rehab programs. All right, y'all, that's it for today. If this video brought value in any way to your life, please make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, don't forget, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Until next time, see you later.